Okay, this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I'm here with a uh, implant rescue case. This one is a Strawman uh, TL case uh, with a, uh, a distal abutment that is a wide neck in the tooth number 30 position that has been fractured. Um, and, and so a prior attempt was made to by another office to cement um, to cement in the uh, the bridge. So there's an abutment. Hopefully we'll see that uh, that metal titanium abutment on uh, number 28. It'll be in the mouth for me to review. And then of course the uh, here's number 30. And let's look at 30 a little cl more closely. You can see the resin type of resin cement that was used as a remnant of resin cement. So not only was the um, bridge cemented down on top of the uh, the abutment, but also uh, the abutment bridge together were cemented into the implant. So I'm expecting to see uh, resin, some type of resin composite cement down in the implant itself. Um, also looking at the design, it was cementable. Is this a custom abutment or not a custom abutment? And can we salvage this bridge? There's been a lot of adjusting to the zirconia ridge as you can see the uh, serrations on the occlusal surfaces so there must have been an attempt to adjust the patient's bite and also there's the cement that's now still inside of the uh, uh, anterior abutment so this is a four tooth cantilever bridge off the distal end of number 30. Uh, we don't know the exact cause uh, we can only postulate that there's an excessive amount of force being applied on the distal aspect of the bridge that may have caused the fracture. Look at the topography of the fractured screw. You can see that um, there have been a number of abrasions made either manually by an operator or clinician or it's just a rubbing up and down inside the, the, um, the implant fixture. So we're going to be looking for and hoping that there aren't any uh, nicks or marred areas inside the fixture itself, but definitely much evidence here, uh, which would then uh, uh, allow us to uh, make an early decision on, on what whether we can re remake or re excuse me reuse this abutment. And of course, the answer is no. This abutment is is already um, it's already got enough. Uh, uh, burnished areas to prevent it from being used again. Also the fragment is there evidence. Whether the bridge can be used again or not is the next question. Uh, whether if, if this is in fact a standard abutment it might be able to be retrofitted uh, and minus the distal um, ponic to help uh, reduce the amount of force and then perhaps a bite guard. So that's a lot of, a lot of information. Let's take a look in the mouth And this is a recent bridge according to our patient. So let's take a look inside. I'm going to reduce the magnification and then first step, have you open please? Okay, so we're going to rinse out this area first. It seems like there's an accumulation of food. And we'll just treat it with a little water coming, okay? And over here, sorry about that. You okay? Yeah. Okay, so the anterior abutment is intact. And we're testing for mobility. And the anterior abutment right now does seem to be moving, but it looks like it is a, a standard angled abutment. We know it's a 15B, 15 boy abutment. So that's the anterior. So I'm assuming if that's correct, the possibility of the distal abutment also being that of a standard um, stock abutment. So we'll see. All right, so I'm going to go in with a soap and with a small brush uh, and just kind of scrub the inside of this implant. And we're going to do an investigation of a wide neck implant, wide neck implant rinse please and then we're gonna just take a micro suction now and we're gonna take a look inside let's 
So you can notice uh, immediately there are some scratches. Air on the mirror, please. So let's take uh, time to look at these little. Okay, slide ejector, please. Okay, so was there a prior attempt um, looking? Uh, we have a. I try to classify these fractures. Uh, this one's right at the level of the first thread, but there is some damage to the uh, implant thread. Just very minor, but it's there. Is that enough to prevent this uh, fragment from, from coming up is the question. Are you okay with that suction like that? Uh -huh. You're okay. All right, I'm just going to continue to dry here. Okay, so we got to just, I'm just going to test it so that I can classify this. So I'm going to pre-soak the area and just check for mobility. Then we can give a final diagnosis. I'm looking as we get that together. I'm just looking around. I'm visualizing. And I'm checking to see if there's any damage to any part of the inside of the top portion of this fixture. And I don't see... Um, I see only one mechanical area of concern, but it's very small and minute. I'm just going to point that out. It is located. It is located toward. I'll point it out with a periodontal probe. Okay, open, please. Okay, let me just have you just be real still here. That's it located right here so that's toward the lingual mesial lingual aspect right there and I just want to confirm right now that we do have a mobile screw fragment so I touched it and it did move so that's good news that's good news for our patient the question is can we get it to come out that you know is there a top portion of the fragment so we're going to pre-soak this for her, and while I'm doing that, um, because that's our first step, you always pre-soak with a solution, a mild solution that acts as, uh, it's not an, a petroleum, it's just uh, a mild solution. You okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. And we'll have that microsuction handy just in case. Maybe I can just go around the, the outside with microsuction. And we can take the um, take that gauze out now and get that out of the view. Okay. All right. Now, can you bring your chin just a little bit up for me? Right there. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Great. Now, what we're doing is we're inspecting the clarity of the solution. Is there any bio burden preventing this screw from coming up? Do we have enough um, material in there? Looks like we do. We're also looking for any kind of bubbles because we want this solution to penetrate past the screw fragment and down into the base of the implant uh, fixture itself. So it's going to be a patient waiting game here. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, move to the next segment. We'll pick this up when we speak to you um, uh, and speak to my patient first here. All right. Dr. Jerry Cuomo with another rescue case with uh, a uh, wide neck implant.